In lesson one, we're going to learn about some math tools. The three basic uh, tools you'll need to learn about are the metric system, just a review, scientific notation, and significant digits. So just taking a look at some of the math tools, what we mean by this are what are the units, uh, what are we measuring, and uh, how do we describe that. So in science we don't uh, use the imperial units anymore, the British system of pounds and uh, uh, old uh, Abraham Simpson and his uh, so many rods to the uh, hogshead. That's all old stuff we don't do anymore. No pounds, no miles. The metric system is now used in physics uh, 20 and 30 and in most scientific, uh, actually hard data gathering, they use the metric system. They'll often explain it to people still using the uh, imperial system because down in the states it's still fairly common uh, to use the uh, imperial. Anyways, the basic units of measurement are the length. Uh, for length we use the meter. All right, And of course we can use uh, smaller or larger units as we'll discuss in a moment. Uh, for mass we use the gram, although in physics we usually use the kilogram as the basic unit. And you'll see that the units such as force and work and power and uh, so on are going to be derived in terms of the kilogram and not the gram. And of course for time we use the second. Sometimes we might use the hour or the day or the year or the week depending on our need. But the second is the standard unit. And of course uh, as I mentioned we use prefixes in, in front of these basic units to show larger or smaller amounts. Uh, in computers, you're probably with kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and even now terabytes. Um, <clears throat> and of course, with the very small, we have a centi. A centimeter is a small. A cent uh, is based on a hundred. A millimeter, very small. A milligram, very small. Micro and nano are very incredibly small. If you can see, uh, ten to the minus six, ten to the minus nine. That means one divided by a million or one divided by a billion. And of course pico would be used to measure the size of an atom if we were measuring length. And so uh, the metric system is a very useful tool in science and you have to have a pretty good mastery of it. On the diploma exam in Physics 30 they do give you a sheet that has all of these uh, prefixes on it and explains a little bit about what they mean. So you don't need to memorize it, but you really should be familiar with most of it. So moving on to the next tool that we need, and that's uh, scientific notation. When a measured value, whatever that you're measuring, as we discussed on the previous uh, slide, length, mass, time, etc., is displayed, the metric prefixes are used to move the decimal. So 200 meters is a uh, we're not using scientific notation there, that's called standard notation. And of course, <clears throat> um, we move the decimal three places to the left from its initial starting point. We move it three places to the left and we, at the same time, we uh, change the unit from meters to kilometers. And a kilo means 10 to the 3, so that means we can move the decimal three places. All right? And that's exactly what we're seeing there. Uh, 350 grams, if we use the same argument, uh, by putting milli in front of the uh, grams, that means the milli is 10 to the minus 3, we move the decimal from in front of the first zero to in front of the fourth zero. And micro means 10 to the minus 6, so we move the decimal six places. And kilo, because kilo is large, we have to move the decimal the other way. All right, so notice as we use uh, some units, the decimal moves to the right. If we use a large uh, prefix, such as kilo or mega, the decimal place moves to the left. When using prefixes, we usually use or choose a prefix that allows a simple numerical value. All right, so you see the two examples there. 350 grams is better than 0 0.000350 megagrams. They're the same value, but one is uh, much easier to understand. All right, so is also used to show large or small numbers. Uh, large numbers, as we 
uh, recall from Kilo Mega, they have a positive exponent, um, and you're multiplying the uh, the base of the uh, number by 10 to the 8, or in the second case, by 10 to the minus 31. So 3 times 10 to the 8, that's the speed of light, uh, meters per second, is of course uh, written in scientific notation as 3.00 times 10 to the 8, or 3 with 8 uh, zeros following it. Okay, and small numbers such as the mass of a, an electron, uh, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, uh, you can see that that negative 31 has actually moved the decimal place 31 places uh, to the left. All right, uh, making a very small, small number. And of course, uh, you always have scientific notation with a single digit, one to nine, followed by a decimal, and then any more numbers that you want to uh, put. All right, so 2.57 is uh, times 10 to the minus three meters is okay, but you wouldn't write a number usually in this form, 25.7 times 10 to the minus four. They mean the same thing, but the uh, one is uh, accepted form, the other one is not really accepted. Although many people use it, uh, it's really not scientific notation. So the next topic is uh, sign, uh, sorry, significant digits, and let's face it, um, nobody's perfect, I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. That means that no measurement can be perfectly correct. Technology is our accuracy, but not to perfection. All right, so when you measure something, uh, the measured value is displayed such as a length, mass, or time period. Let's say you put a, um, a tomato on the scale at, uh, at the store, and it measures out a certain number of grams, and uh, of course it's telling you the mass of that tomato is 182 grams but is it 182.7 or 182.6? And if you know the six and the seven, is it 182.63 or 182.64? And you can always go another decimal beyond. Is it nearest the nearest hundredth of a gram, thousandth of a gram, ten thousandth of a gram, hundred thousandth, millionth of a gram? We could keep getting smaller and smaller, but of course, to do that, we need better technology. and. Uh, and also, we need to use common sense when measuring things. We really need to know the width of a butterfly wing. Is it good enough to know it to the nearest millimeter, or do we need to know the hundredth of a millimeter in some scientific study that we're doing? All right, so for example, measuring the, the thickness of a pencil, um, we could use a ruler to measure the thickness of a pencil. And we might measure that. If we really uh, look carefully, it might measure out to be 6.5 millimeters, which would be a reasonable estimate with a, uh, a wooden ruler. However, if you use a micrometer, which is uh, in the picture there, you can see uh, sometimes got a micrometer, but a micrometer we're used, we might measure the, the uh, width of the pencil to be 6.47. Now notice, the 6.47 is about the same number, but notice it's accurate to the nearest hundred, whereas the previous uh, measurement was only accurate to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. More advanced technology, all right? The micrometer is a little more advanced than the ruler, and that allows more digits of accuracy. So when you see a digit, you really should consider that digit in terms of uh, how accurate is it? If it has seven significant digits or seven decimals, it must be have been measured with something that was very, very accurate. Now, sometimes if you uh, do a, uh, a calculation on your calculator, uh, an example would be two divided by seven, you might get a whole bunch of digits in your answer. That, all right, your calculator shows a whole bunch of digits. Does that really mean that you should put that answer down on paper as the exact answer? Or should you use some other uh, method to indicate the level of accuracy? And that's what we want to do. So we use significant digits to reflect the degree of accuracy of a measurement. 
using the correct number of SIG gigs is considered, uh, or is uh, to express a measurement, is considered an important scientific skill. All right, so if we're all speaking the same language uh, scientifically, then it makes uh, a little more sense to everybody that reads it. We know that if you said three SIG gigs, that means the same to you as it, might, as it does to somebody halfway across the world. So um, here's the rules for significant digits, and we're going to follow them. It's not a huge deal, but it's important to be consistent with others. All right? So following uh, these simple rules, all non-zero numbers are significant. Uh, what that means is any number from 1 to 9 is c considered significant. So if you write down a 9, it means something. And all zeros between non-zero numbers are significant. Trailing zeros are significant, and leading zeros are not significant. Now, what does all this mean? Well, let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, in the following numbers, 142.5, these are all non-zero numbers. And so, they have uh, this number, 142.5, has four significant digits. All right, the next one. Uh, 63.705, looking at that second rule, all non-zeros, or sorry, all zeros between two non-zero digits are significant. 63.705, uh, the zero is there, but because it's between two non-zero numbers, the seven and the five, it's considered significant, so 63.705 has five significant digits. Now, this next one, 0.00, .00 zero, this is where these last two rules become important. It says trailing zeros are significant. The trailing zero is the one at the end of the eight. All right? It's uh, trailing the eight, and so it's considered significant. So because we have the five and the eight and this zero, that's so far three significant digits. Leading zeros, it says, are not significant. These three zeros out in the front of the five, uh, they are considered leading zeros. Really what they're doing is just moving the decimal place, and they can be considered not significant. And so this number, even though there are six digits, only three of them are considered significant. All right? And so uh, that's the deal with significant digits.